Welcome to the Teakin Clinic. Thank you for watching. Ty Campbell here and in today's episode we are going to cover speed control installation. We're going to go over placing it in the vehicle, we're going to cover some soldering tips, and we are going to do some initial setup just to get up and running. Today we are going to install an RX-8 Gen 3 8 scale speed control into our TLR 8X e buggy. So let's get some tools out and get this thing installed. This is everything that you'll get in the RX-8 Gen 3 packaging. Obviously you'll get the RX-8 Gen 3 itself, the fan pack with the necessary hardware to mount the fan. There are also four small screws to mount via this bolt pattern on the bottom of the ESC, should you choose to do so. There is the wire. This also has the hot wire data cable in here for plugging into the data fan port and uh, three pieces of 12 gauge wire. We've got our ESC manual. Make sure you keep this handy because it's got all kinds of troubleshooting tips. The quick start guide is in there and should you have any issues, all the warranty information is in here. These two are basically just if you have a hot wire and you want to plug into this ESC, make sure you go get the latest hot wire off of our website or off of the Play Store so that it will connect to the RX-8 Gen 3. Now let's figure out where we're going to mount this in our 8XE. First, we're gonna mount TLR's ESC plate into the car. Always Loctite into aluminum. I already put double-sided tape on the bottom of my RX-8 Gen 3. We're just gonna mount it on the TLR electronics plate. It'll probably sit something about like this. So the RX-8 Gen 3 is now mounted. I went ahead and just used double-sided tape like I showed earlier and it's in there nice and solid. It shouldn't move anywhere. And I also routed the receiver wire back under here. I actually went underneath the motor can and then the wire fits right in between the mud guard and the actual motor mount clamps. And then just ran it right down the side of the car and into the receiver box. And I did that just to keep it away from any moving parts because I don't want it to get chewed up in the spur gear. Now that the ESC is mounted, we can go ahead and start wiring it up to our motor and get our battery plug on. Now that it's time to solder our ESC into our car, there are a few little tools that will make things easier. I love this jig. This is called the Jigs Up. You can get this online. It's fairly inexpensive and it's got all kinds of positions and stuff. It can hold plugs. It just makes soldering a lot easier. It's like having a second set of hands available. We just need our 12 gauge wire. This is what we're going to use for our motor and our battery connections. So the first thing we want to do is strip the end of our wire. And I normally like to take off, you know, about five, six millimeters, not a whole lot because you just need a little bit of wire showing. That'll make tinning it easier. So all we want to do is take our wire stripper, use the 12 gauge, and just strip a little bit off the end. Give those wires a good twist. And then we're gonna place this in our soldering jig. Nice clean iron tip. We're gonna go ahead and flow some solder onto there. And then we're going to tin the end of this wire. Now tinning just prepares the wire for better adhesion to the solder post. So you don't wanna overdo it with your solder. You just wanna get some into the strands. And we're going to want to do that with five different pieces of wire. So we're going to do that same procedure each time to prepare our wire to solder onto our RX-8 posts. We're going to do the same thing on our ESC posts. We're going to tin them. So clean iron, little bit of solder on the iron tip, and then you're just going to want to put it into this solder pocket on the RX-8 posts. Flow a little bit of solder. Don't go crazy with it because we don't want too much. And we're going to do that for each of our five solder posts. Now we're going to take our pre-tinned wire and to wire up this ESC, I'm actually going to stand my wires up coming out of the posts and then route them over and then attach them to the motor tabs. Now I'm going to route the wires this way because that puts any tension or any weight pulling the tabs towards the front of the motor. And there's a rivet holding the solder tab to this phenolic board in the back of the motor. You can put the wires off the back. I don't recommend it just because then you've got some tension pulling that and it's gonna to wanna to pull that rivet out. So now we're gonna take our tinned wire and our tinned ESC post and we're going to solder them together. Clean iron tip, a little bit of solder float on there. 
and we are going to heat up the wire just a little bit, heat up the post. We're going to bring them together and apply heat to both of them. This should only take two or three seconds at the most. If you can't hold the wire this close to your solder joint, it's too hot, you're going to get solder flowing up into the strands, which is going to make the wire really stiff, and you're going to risk getting a cold solder joint. So now that we've got this wire, this is our A-phase wire, we're going to route this how we want it to be routed. We want to keep them somewhat short. So I'll probably run mine about like this, and then we'll just clip it at the length that we want. I'm going to strip this back just like we did on this side. I'm going to tin the wire. I'm going to tin the solder tab on the 1900T8. And then we're going to use the same process for soldering it up to the ESC. All right, so we got all of our wires soldered up. We've got our three leads to the motor, and then we've got our battery connector. Now we just need to plug the sensor wire in, and you can get shorter versions of these. This is a 200 millimeter sensor wire. We do do a 150. So for installs where the ESC is pretty close to the motor, it's pretty handy to have a shorter version. But this can tuck right down next to the ESC and just plug right into the sensor port. Now we just have to do some initial setup on our RX-8. The factory settings, I highly recommend just starting with those and then you can dial it in wherever you want to. But the first thing we need to do is make sure our transmitter is bound up to our receiver and then we're gonna do a radio calibrate on the ESC. So we turn this on and it should find neutral. All right, so our receiver is putting out an acceptable neutral signal. So the ESC accepted that armed and is now ready to drive. Make sure that your throttle trim is centered, and then to perform a radio calibration, all you do is press the mode button. This starts the sequence, finds neutral first, and it found it. Now it's flashing up here on this side, the increment side, looking for full throttle, so pull full throttle on your transmitter. It accepted full throttle, so now we want a full brake signal, push full brake. And we are calibrated and ready to go and it should flash over to this side and then back to center. That's your onboard heat indicator. So right now it's at ambient temperature and it will climb the ladder up towards the right hand side or the increment button side as the ESC heats up. So that's a good temperature indicator on there. The last thing we want to do is set our voltage cutoff. The RX-8 comes out of the box with a 2S LiPo cutoff. So if we're going to be running 4 cell in our e-buggy, we need to set it for 4 cell. Now it's super easy, you can do it on board with the buttons. All you want to do is push this mode button seven times up to VC, hit increment, that enters the setting. There's two lights showing, that's 2S. So we hit it two more times, four, that's four cell. Let it rearm. And now we're ready to go drive. So that is the basics on installing any Tekken speed control. The process is going to be the same. All the programming interfaces are the same all the way across the board for our ESCs. So doing the radio calibration, setting the voltage cutoff, that's all going to be the exact same process. Just make sure that when you are installing these in the car, put it in a good spot where it's not going to get hit by anything. It's protected from moving parts. Make sure the receiver wire and the switch wire are away from moving parts as well because if they get damaged it can cause you some troubles later on. When you're soldering I cannot stress enough to just take your time, don't use too much solder and make sure you have a good soldering iron. If you do run into any issues like with the radio calibration because some radios are different than others. You might have to tweak your settings a little bit in order to get it to accept a calibration or it might not find neutral the first time you turn it on. Check out our video in the Tegan Clinic on radio calibration. Put the link right here for you. Go check out that video if you're having trouble calibrating. Setting the voltage cutoff, we set it for 4S in this car, but we can go up to 6S. You can also adjust them custom. We'll have more videos covering voltage cutoff and all the available settings on our Tekken ESCs. So be sure to check out the Tekken Clinic. Make sure you subscribe so you get notifications when we put up new clinic videos. And go check out Tekken Builds too. We're working on some pretty cool stuff over there. Ty Campbell, see you next time.